In this problem, we're given kind of a real world setup using a function, and we wanna be able to figure out a little bit of information about that function as well as that function's derivative. So what we're given here is um, that the function h of t is representing the average height. So think about h as height. Height of t is giving the average height, and then the units that we're gonna have there are feet, of a person who is t years old. So when we're looking at h of t, we're thinking about our input value being t and our output value being the h of t, or the height at that time t. So then that answers our first question. In real world terms, what does h of 12 represent and what are its units? Well, if we're talking about h of 12, our input value is 12 and we're talking about that 12 being measured in years because it says where, um, where t is the number of years old. So we're talking h of 12 would be the height, um, the average height, because the, our, our function there is um, measuring average height. So we would have average height um, of a 12 year old. Um, and then how many, or what would the units be? Well, the height function is measuring in feet. And so um, our units there would be feet. But see, that would make sense because if we're talking about the height of something, feet is a height measurement. So that does make sense. So now let's take a look at one where we have to think a bit harder. What does h prime of 12 represent and what are its units? So let's uh, think here. We know that our input value is 12 years old, and so we know it's gonna be measuring something about this 12 year old. But it's not the height that it's measuring, but rather uh, the derivative of the height. So that derivative function is going to be a, um, a rate of change sort of thing. And so what we're talking about here for h prime of 12 could be the instantaneous rate of change um, and that would be of an average 12 year old Well, and I suppose not of the average 12 year old, it would be of the average height of the 12 year old. Okay, so instantaneous rate of change of the, of the height of an average 12 year old. Okay, so then uh, what would be the units. Well, we're talking about a rate of change. So we are talking about uh, the change in the output value over the change in the input value, because remember this rate of change is coming from slope, really. And so um, the the output value would be the, the height measurements, and so that would be feet for the output value. So our units would be feet over, well, it would be change in the output value over the change in the input value. So the input value is the time or the t years old there. And so it would be feet per year because t is being measured in years. Okay. So now we have an interpretation of what both of these functions are giving us along with the units that go with it. So let's look a little bit more at these two functions. Um, is h of 12 positive or negative and why? Well, remember we already assessed that h of 12 was measuring the height of a 12 year old, average height of the 12 year old. Well, we're not gonna talk about negative height and so it would definitely be positive height. So h of 12 is positive, really because negative height doesn't make sense. <laughs> 
So the next thing we have, well, what about h prime of 12? Is it positive or negative and why? Well, when we're talking about h prime, we're talking about the rate of change. So we're talking about like the rate of growing or perhaps even shrinking. And so when we're looking at this, would a 12 year old be growing or shrinking? Well, definitely the 12 year old would be growing. So if the 12 year old is growing, then we're talking about a positive rate of change. Um, and so we could just say positive because the person would be uh, growing or getting taller. So we'll say the 12 year old um, would be getting taller. So the rate of change would be positive because he's getting taller, bigger. Okay. So now um, the last question that we have here to go along with this whole setup is at approximately what value of t would h of t have a maximum and why? All right, so let's take a look here. We know that in general, um, I mean, you start out as a baby at a certain length or height, and then that baby would continue to grow up until a certain point. Perhaps um, you would think we would be, you know, peaked out and then we just never get bigger or smaller after that. But actually, you know, as bones deteriorate, perhaps um, height drops a little bit too. And so really at some point you go from um, getting bigger to perhaps you're kind of leveled off. And then perhaps you would be, um, as your bones start to de deteriorate, you would maybe be getting a little bit shorter. And so let's just say um, we would have a max there for height at whatever age we would maybe be before we had deteriorating bones. So let's just approximate that at perhaps 60, 60 years old. So let's say maximum uh, at, let's say T approximately 60 uh, years old. Um, and that would really be because um, after that time, Um, people perhaps are slouching or bones deteriorating and they kind of start to shrink. So I'll just even say people might start to shrink um, because of maybe slouching or um, we could even say deteriorating bones. So then the last thing that we have is at approximately what value of t would h prime of t have a maximum and why? All right, so the h prime function is talking about the rate of change. So when would the rate of change be the biggest? Well, I would think that a rate of change, when is a person growing the fastest? When is that uh, rate of change the biggest? So we could say uh, maybe around a growth spurt area. So maybe let's say maximum... And of course, this is going to vary, but let's say at approximately t equals, let's say, 14 years old. Um, and that would be because um, that would be the age of a growth spurt. And so this whole problem was really just to kind of get your mind wrapped around the differences um, in the practical sense of a function and its derivative. Being able to differentiate between those two functions because they fundamentally tell us different things. They even have different units for output values. Um, and we've seen here that perhaps they would be maximized at different times because the whole concept of what it is that we're looking for on the biggest for these two functions is completely different. And so um, each sort of application problem setup, each one's a little bit different. And so just keep in mind that to be able to answer these particular questions, I asked myself, 
Are we talking about h, what is the output for that particular function, or are we talking about h prime? What is it that h prime is giving us? Because it's certainly not the exact same thing as just this average height that we have um, for the h function. And so you really need to think about those things, the relationship between h and h prime to be able to answer these sorts of questions.